Okay, I had to run and get a couple things. Today we're going to be making nose molds. This is a mold, standalone free uh, mold of the uh, silicone mold of the Cujo nose. One that will go on the end of the dog here. Right here. That will be cut out and go on there. Now what I need to do first is, is show you how to measure how much resin to put in here. And you just take a simple cup of water, pour it in there, like so. Fill your mold up with water to where you want the line to be. Dump it out in a measuring cup and measure. You can see I need two ounces of water. That means I need one ounce of A, and this is Smooth Cow 65 d one ounce of A and one ounce of B. So let me just pour the water back in the cup. Dry the cup out. Dry the dry the mold out real quick. <clears throat> I'm gonna tilt this so you guys can see it. I just need to dry it. Made a thick freestanding silicone mold for the nose. I had to sculpt this because um, uh, I have to make these individual for every piece to fit. And I didn't have a line flange on them for where the spur would tuck up against the nose and be symmetrical and line up with the nose. So I had to redo the one that I did before. Um, I had to take the entire thing and just uh, make a flange line all the way around it. Now, we got the mold dry. We know we need two ounces of A, uh, two ounces, one ounce of A, one ounce of B. Let me get this real quick because I don't want to screw this up. Hang on. Uh, clean this cup out a little bit. All right, you got your cup here. You got the mold right here. Now, also, these noses are going to be black, so I'm going to drop a couple of uh, a couple of drops of uh, silicone. This is so so strong, black, and I'm going to put a couple of drops of that in there. So you got to take a. You be shake them up real quick, and you put one ounce of uh, pull one ounce of uh, A in here. And one ounce of A doesn't take much. Doesn't take much at all. We can get the second bottle. Uh -oh, I swear every time one of them doesn't want to open. I always have to get a pair of vice grips after them. One of these lids on one of them will always fuse and not want to open. Well, yeah, I want out to be. Okay. Get out get the hair. You don't want to under stir it, you don't want to have it under ratioed. You have too much, it's okay if you don't have enough, it won't set. Okay, now get a stir stick. Uh, one little stick down here.
little shop gym. Oh, I gotta put black in here. A couple of drops of this black. It says so. That's enough, just a little bit, just a tiny bit of black. Very little. You'd be surprised how much this will go. Fill that up real well. And it instantly turns black. Fill it up real well. Even get black on the uh, stick, on the wood. Then you take your mold, uh, do a high four. You don't get bubbles. Right off the side. And fill that up. I'll pop this out because I need to have something to pop that up with real quick. Right there. I'm going to make sure that all of this residual comes out. I need a little bit more. So I'm going to pour about one uh, half ounce in there again just to top that off. That's a little slush. Stir that up. And even the residual black comes out of this. So. Put the rest of that in there, fill it up. I'm going to let this sit for a while. Oops, it's running out. I don't want that. There we go. Clean that up. So let that mold off to the side, let it, let it set. And um, once it cures and it sets, then it will be ready to go. I need to balance this on something, so I'm going to balance it on something and put it in somewhere where it can set without falling over. I balance it on something and set it up. And there it goes, that's it. I let that set, and when I pull it out, I'll pull it out. I take it, measure it against the dog, cut the nose section out that I need that end, and I've got it squared off now where I can cut it right here, cut it right here and down the sides in kind of a square, pop that nose on there, super glue it on there, and then it has a nose already. And the reason I have these first samples out is I wanted to make sure I had the right length of fur on here. This is very, very fine seal fur. So once I get that nose on there, then I can have fur samples that will like go around it. And this looks rough at the moment, but what it does, let me see if I can find the model that I used to I got another one that I, I had to work on to remold. 
uh, sculpt in. I'll cast one, and I don't know where it is at the moment. I can't find it. It's around here somewhere. I know it is. Hang on just a second. I'll see if I can find it. <clears throat> Okay, here it is. Here it is. This is the other one that I molded, and I had to modify it with clay because it was too too big. And you see how I've got I've got the screw in here. That's to anchor it on there. But you see how I've got this flap right here on the back and around the sides right here. This is where the fur tucks into it. So when it goes on there. The fur will actually come down over the nose like that and I can tuck it down and trim it to where it will actually look like fur on a natural nose. And that gives the impression of a natural dog, but then you have to trim it and that's the whole thing. I gotta I gotta tuck it and trim it and nip it and do all that stuff. But that will give you the impression of what I'm doing right now and I've got a foot a nose, this nose, or a nose in here, and all I do is lay it up against the side of it, measure how far back it would go, cut that, then go over the top and cut out the sections here, and boom, that's it. And then take the fur and tuck it back here, lay it on the gel lines, like so and make sure that everything fits. So, I'm in process of waiting on a couple more samples of fur because I don't have the right brown for the ears. This fur that I ordered is too light. It's not bad in so far as the thickness, it's just too light a color. And I did try airbrushing. I airbrushed some of the white fur with a little bit of with a little bit of darkness, and it doesn't look exactly the same. It looks airbrushed. It doesn't look quite that great. And this just doesn't look the same. It's almost, but not quite. And I don't know. I may use this on the first one just as a prototype. Of course, these are supposed to be the ear flaps. And they were supposed to be that fur with black mass in. And they would go right about here on the sides of the head. But I have to shape them out. And that's the thing. And I got these, like, you know, cut to, to be ear flap, but I have to mold them and then put wire or something underneath or make an ear mold. And then this is the neck fur, which is long and shaggy, which would go underneath here for the neck. If I can find that nail, where is it? Holy crap. I didn't just lose the nail, did I? Yeah, here it is. So I've got this for the neck area to go in behind the head. Now all I have to do is shape this short shielding part to fit in and around the muzzle right here. And then the, uh, where does that thing go? Okay. Ah. And uh, then I've got the undercoat right here, which will be, I don't know if it's going to be long and shaggy or short, but that's pretty much it. And then I have to get the weight for the brown, or I can probably cut some of that. And lay that down on the on the top of the head and pin and tuck and stuff. I may have to do a little bit more sculpting on the wrinkles in around the eyes. I definitely have to make some eyelids for this. 
Um, but other than that, it's pretty much getting ready for the final set uh, of where it's going to be. I just don't know exactly 100%. I'm just waiting to see if the first samples that I get are going to be the right color and the right length. <clears throat> so, hopefully with a little taxidermy magic, I can get the sap fur on here and get this tucked and pinned, shaved, glued, all that stuff. And it'll look as good as hopefully the deer or the hog over here. And hopefully it's real. It won't be real fur, but it's, it's, it's fake fur. But it's about as close to real as I can get. Now we'll come back over here. The nose is indeed curing. Uh, it's set up. It's not quite hard. It's still warm. I could likely try to pull this away a little bit just to see what it looks like. And I think I'm going to let it set a little bit more. Not quite done. Still hot. So I've got to do that. But this is the kind of the impression that I do get. And I have to take a screw and bolt that in and um, cut that nose off and bolt, bolt this one or another one on there. So that's where I'm at at the moment and also trying to get that lower jaw done and shaped out and, and everything. So we'll see how everything turns out. I'm hoping for the best, but I don't know at the moment. So we'll, we'll see how it all turns out. I've got two of these things now uh, done. I got another one done today that I just poured out of the mold over here and have it just about ready to go. Still got to trim it out and get it done, but it's pretty much ready to go too. The only thing I'll do is, like I said, cut the nose off and do that. But I got it pretty much set up. Because I had the bad one come out the other day, and I did this last night in the morning. So now I have two of them. One with a puffer board on the back, which I have to trim down at the bottom. Because the fur will go in around here. So I just cut that off. And here's the back where you put the, the bolt hangers and the screws to hang it up with. And this fur will be tucked in around here, so it's not too bad in so far as the, uh, look, there's a little bit of foam overhang which can easily cut off. So I can cut that off. But I'll have two of these ready to go. Get those fur samples. Um, I can do this. Matter of fact, let me take y'all over here and I will do this. Take a Sharpie. And here's to show you how I do the layout for the fur. To know where to pin, how to pin, and what to pin. Take a photo like this. Okay? Now I know that the nose hairs and the eye hairs are going to be different. So what I have to do is this is about, this is just was printed at about life size. So I already know that I'm going to need some hair to go tucking in here. Let me pull this off. And it's going to come right around here, straight down through here. Okay, same thing for the other side. You put it up there, you follow the line, contours around the line, the eyebrows, where I marked it on the, on, on the form. And 
and that marks off all of this is white and then as you see this area here is going to be brown through the ears and the white goes pretty much we have another photo reference here like this photo and the white goes pretty much straight up through here So there's an almost line of white right there. And see, that's where I sculpted that line, that groove in there, in the actual mold. So I just followed the lines of my sculpting, and there you have it. And then, of course, I gotta, you know, do a little bit of texturing right here for the for the eyebrow. Bring that down. That's gotta come down here because they all have fat eyebrows here and then there's going to be black and brown all of this is going to be blacked out and dark right here so you got pretty much almost like raccoon eyes with the deep insets and sunk in So I mark them off, then I've got my paint layout around the eyes right here. And then the muzzle for the white, straight down the, the head here. It's not going to be straight, but it's going to be about where it needs to be. And see, that way I can take photo references, like on the sides here. And even the eyes have a shape right here. So the block is going to go right in around here. like so and then I would take that same thing and do a mirror image flip which is about where I've got it and then there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a drop here so it folds back into the back So I'm marking that off, and I know all this is going to be white with a little bit of brown, with a little bit of white and brown right there. So this whole area here will be white with little black, you know, dots and whatnot for the freckles and stuff like that. Of course, these aren't going to go on the mold. This is just. I'm just marking the areas where the, where the dots and whiskers and shit will go. And there's a little bit of black right there. And then there's a little bit of black in the muzzle. And then the thing that I've got to do left is the dog has, from about here on the outside, has a fleshy um, piece right here. You can see it right there. It's like a fleshy flap and I have to actually get some epoxy sculpt and sculpt that in where I can tuck it and glue it to the flesh uh, to the skin and make the flap so I'm not quite a hundred percent done yet with it but it will be uh, it's getting there for the most part, I'm just waiting on the first samples uh, that I need to come. 
And so I have, if I'm marking that off, I do have fur samples here that I can use. You know, like this, this patch might here get trimmed and cut. I have to figure out how to trim and cut this. And the whole thing is with that, I've got a whole sheet of it right here. Got a big uh, thing of this fur right here for the face. So I've got plenty to do it with. That didn't cost but about 20 bucks. So, I was lucky in finding, I'm not buying the big Allen Hops uh, 15 yard rolls because I'm only doing a few of these. Because each one of these, when it gets done, if it's good enough, Probably going to run somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500, $1,700, $2,000, somewhere in there. So, all the time, effort, and everything put into it. We'll see how good I can make it look closer to a real animal. Um, because once it gets put on there, um, it has still has to be shaved down and all that and shaped up and stuff. So... Hopefully I can bring some of the taxidermy magic out and make it look good. And if I can do that, then that's why I have three of these things ready. This is more or less a test mount, but I could use it as a real mount. And of course I have to make some more eyes. So um, I got to find the 16 millimeter molds that I have pour clear resin in there and make these eyes again because I only have one set. Actually, I got two. Two sets. <coughs> but um, that's pretty much it. Let me see. This is on auto. Yeah, I got this sample right here and I was going to put this on the top. Well, you can see how long that is how that doesn't quite match up to the right length of hair. It's too long. That's how much makes them look like Santa Claus. As a versus really short sheared hair here, which is on dog on most dogs' muzzles. It's very short and and uh, <laughs> so that is pretty much it for this. I uh just going to show a little progress on that, so when that first sample comes in, we'll see how it goes. And for then, till until then, that'll be about all she wrote for this. So I will see you guys uh, next time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.